So here's a question for you. Are you following Jesus closely enough that you run the risk of persecution? Are you even at risk of that happening to you? That's a challenging question because most of the time, 99.9% of us in this room, the answer is no. We really don't live our life in such a way where we really run the risk of persecution. Here's a better way to put that question. Are you too close for comfort? I like that better. Here's what I mean by that. Are you pushing in so far in your relationship with Jesus that you know who he is and what he's about, and you know the people that he wants you to talk to, you know the places he wants you to go, you know the conversations that he wants you to have, you know the people that he wants you to forgive. Are you so close to Jesus that you know the heart of Jesus that it's a little bit too uncomfortable for you? Because while it's true, you could say that being close to Jesus should be comforting. When you're close to Jesus and know the heart of Jesus, it is anything but comfortable. And so, are you too close for comfort? It's a great question, isn't it? Um, Another book that I read by Mark Batterson called All In has a great example of this. He talks about one-way missionaries. And one-way missionaries uh, back in the day were people who were called into the mission field to to share the love and power of Jesus into um, unreached people groups. And when I mean unreached people groups, I mean some really distant lands that it was very dangerous to uh, go into, that these people knew full well that going into this place, they they were probably going to lose their life. They were going into some villages that were really harsh uh, towards Christianity, people that would be thrown into prison, heads cut off. A lot, of, a lot of crazy things. And so what these missionaries called one-way missionaries would do is instead of packing their suitcases with their belongings, they would actually pack a coffin. And they would put all their belongings in the coffin and they would ship the coffin and buy a one-way ticket to where they were going, knowing full well that it was expected that they would be martyred for their faith. One of the guys that um, Mark talks about in his book, All In, is this guy, A.W. Milne, And uh, he was called to a very remote island that I can't even pronounce, so I won't even try. But uh, it was a tribe filled with headhunters and cannibals. Sign me up for that one, you know. But he, you know what his response was? I'm not afraid. And the reason why he gave for not being afraid was he, he, he gave this reason. I already died to myself a long time ago. What should I fear? And so he literally packs up his things in a coffin, shifts his coffin, buys a one-way ticket to this remote island, and starts ministering to these people. Well, the story goes, he wasn't eaten, thankfully, and he spent 35 years, 35 years, loving and serving these people. To when he came to the end of his life, they actually buried him in the most honorable place in the entire village, and they put over his grave this inscription. When he came, there was no light, And when he left, there was no darkness. Don't you love that? I I love that story. I love that testimony. But I'm also looking at it feeling really challenged, and I'm sure you might feel really challenged as well. And I guess I'm confused. At what point did I and what point did you think that following Christ meant that you did not need to possess any courage? At what point did you ever think that you could throw out the warning label that said, Warning, following Jesus might be hazardous to your life. Here's another way to put it. You can either follow Jesus or you can stay in your comfort zone. But you can't do both. 